Don Quixote Doflamingo debuted on the 27th of June 2016. Doflamingo and his batch was one of the most anticipated releases of 2016, bringing along some powerful new characters. Prior to his release, the Driven class was injected into the game along with the first batch of Don Quixote Doflamingo family members, such as Caesar Clown, Virgo, Monet, Baby Five, and Buffalo. Moving into the second batch of Don Quixote family members, this included some powerful new characters such as Lao G, Don Quixote Pirates, Giola, Don Quixote Pirates, Treble, Don Quixote Pirates, Senor Pink, Don Quixote Pirates, as well as Sugar, Don Quixote Pirates. And the flagship character of the Driven class, a character that owned a captain effect that provided his class with an incredibly powerful attack multiplier at a very high risk. He also had one of the most powerful special abilities in the game that led this character to see usage in various teams moving forward with future character releases. Introducing the captain of the Don Quixote Pirates, Don Quixote do Flamingo. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugo Fest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. And thank you very much for supporting another episode of the Legends of OPTC series. I'm actually recording this video very early on in the week. I'm actually recording it on Monday for next Sunday. So if there are any new patrons during the week, I apologize, but you'll be in next week's episode. But thank you very much for supporting, guys. I do greatly appreciate it. And today we're going to be covering Don Quixote Do Flamingo, who is a very powerful legend on release. A lot of people really wanted this guy. And if you got him, you were sitting really, really good. Because not only was he really good for Driven, he was good for Cerebral Teams, he was good for quick teams there's lots of usability for this guy but before his release there was actually this random banner that was the start of the don quixote family as rare recruits and this was relating to punk hazard now this actually debuted the driven class we have this rare recruit caesar clown who was very powerful on release as well being a dex driven cerebral captain effect was a driven 2.5 captain so if you had this guy and like you didn't have dofi for example this could be your driven captain he also would poison all enemies and give driven characters an attack boost for two turns a very valuable unit that you really wanted to get if you wanted to build some type of driven team he was very 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 useful then you move on to some other characters that released virgo wasn't too useful he was a int striker powerhouse captain effect was a 2.5 striker captain i know that the red kid from very early on was also a 2.5 striker captain so this was another opportunity to get another version of that also give himself a matching slot and boost his own attack for one turn he de dealt a bit of damage i'm um, not a very valuable special but a 2.5 striker captain was always useful and then you have monet who is kind of like one of the first units in the game that was used for a conditional boost she's a psi free spirit cerebral her captain effect was pretty bad just recovering uh, um, every every turn basically and then just did a bit of damage at the end of the turn It was a very awful captain effect But the special ability would delay all enemies for one turn and then boost attack against delayed enemies by 1.25 for two turns So this was like the first self proccing conditional that I can remember that was in the game Of course 1.25 was not much But it's still a 25% bonus damage if you're able to get that delay to activate So Monet was actually pretty valuable when she first released because of her usability in that case uh, Baby 5 also came out a, a strong Strength Striker Shooter would be a two times attack boost to three different classes, which was interesting. And then Delta Bit of Damage boosts the attack of shooters by 1.5. If you hit six perfects, it boosts all those other three characters by 1.5 in the following turn. So, you know, this was a semi-shooter booster if you didn't have um, Raid Zephyr, which is what a lot of the shooter teams were using on Global because Raid Zephyr took a very long time to release. This was essentially our best shooter booster that we had for a long time, as unfortunate as that is. And then the final character in this uh, first batch of characters was Buffalo, a quick shooter free spirit that wasn't really too interesting. A very, uh, I mean, he was a combo captain. Combo captains you guys may see throughout some of these batches. Basically, after certain combo hits, you would get a certain attack boost for your team. These characters never really took off, unfortunately. And his special randomizes all slots and then gives himself a guaranteed quick slot. So, those were the first batch of characters that released prior to the Doflamingo batch. But then finally, the Don Quixote Doflamingo version 2 batch came out with 
with the other characters. Um, there is actually a version 3 batch, which is what we're going to be covering in next week's episode, so definitely stay tuned for that. So Lao Ji was another character that debuted with Doflamingo, fighter-driven strength character. Captain Effect would reduce cooldowns of all specials by three, boost attack of fighters by two times. Very weak Captain Effect, but a good special changes all slots, including block into G slots, and then does random typeless damage. This was cool. This is the first introduction of G slots, which are kind of like matching slots, except matching slots give you double damage. G slots would give you 1.5 times damage. Which is still not bad though, because it's guaranteed to give you a full board of slots, and if you have someone like Raid Shiki, for example, he changes G slots into matching and also gives you a driven attack boost. So it was good synergy between Lao G and also Raid Shiki back in the day if you were building a, a driven team. He also had this one right here. This was a pretty monumental character, Sugar. Sugar had a very powerful special ability that would instantly defeat any enemy that would be 20% HP or less. Now, there were a lot of teams you could use that would just run a bunch of health cutters so when you reach a final boss stage you can activate multiple health cuts and then they'd be under 20 percent you can launch sugar special and instantly win a fight um, we're not going to be showcasing that in today's video, but that is just one of the ways that this character saw a little bit of play back in the day. Uh, moving back over here to Jola. Jola, a dex-driven free spirit character. Bad, really bad captain effect, but a berry boosting captain effect. One of the first characters to do that. And then also a special ability that reduced any damage above 2,000 by 88% for two turns. Kind of like Inazuma was when the free spirit batch came out, even though Inazuma is not free spirit. This is actually a free spirit character this time that can actually reduce that damage for you. Jola wasn't super useful though. We have Treble here. Treble, Int, Cerebral, Driven. Captain effect boosting Cerebral and Driven by 2.25 and then making Tandem and Recovery slots beneficial to those characters as well. I mean, anyone who knows Driven and Tandem and Recovery slots counted as beneficial, really looking forward to when we get to that episode. But uh, Treble had a special ability that was interesting at least, changing the Captain slot into matching, locks orbs for one turn and then dealt a bit of Int damage. Um, it's really cool at least that he's an orb locker. Orb lockers are still really, really valuable in today's day and age. And then we have this guy, Senor Pink, which is probably the best rare recruit of the batch. Even though Sugar was hyped up a lot, a lot of people really wanted Sugar, this is the character that probably saw the most play out of this entire batch. Free Spirit Fighter Psy character. We actually did use this in the Free Spirit video with V1 Sabo. This guy's so good. Special ability with a multi-stage special, but stage two, giving himself a matching slot and then giving all characters a 1.75 times orb boost. Really good character. If you're running a mono Free Spirit team, this is a character you really want to have good for fighter good for side teams just a valuable character overall senior pink was so so good but now we get to the legend of the batch here we have don quixote do flamingo who is a quick driven cerebral his captain effect very interesting would boost the attack of driven by three times until you hit other than perfect what this essentially means is is it's always giving you a three times attack boost to your driven characters but if you miss a perfect or you hit a good or a great you lose all of your attack. So it's a very, very risky captain to run. But if you're able to consistently hit your perfects, you're getting a three times attack boost all the time to your characters, which was very valuable at the time. And then a special ability, this special ability was so good, changing adjacent slots into matching and amplifies the effects of orbs of all characters by two times for one turn. The thing is though, is that at times you would probably still want to use Raid Doflamingo over this guy, just due to the fact that um, Raid Doflamingo, you could swap some orbs around, even though this guy can guarantee you some slots. If you do use him as the captain, he doesn't even give himself a matching slot. That was one of the really big drawbacks of the unit. But still, if you're using him as a crewmate in the middle slot, you're guaranteed to get three matching slots, a two times orb boost. Still a valuable special, no matter how you look at it. This character was immensely powerful upon release, and I cannot wait to jump into the video today with him. So looking at the wheel this week, we have a couple of different raid bosses that we are able to to challenge today. We have Clash Blackbeard making an appearance once again, Clash Duval, as well as Clash Shiki. Clash Shiki is going to be a difficult one, definitely the most difficult raid boss that we have come up against in the um, in the Legends of OPTC series thus far. So uh, honestly, would prefer to leave that until we get a little bit more of a powerful legend, but still would be an interesting one if we get it. Blackbeard, I think, will be easy for Doflamingo, and Duval, I think, will also be an interesting one. He's got a couple of gimmicks that would be kind of challenging to get around, I feel. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel, and and let's see what we get today. What is Doflamingo going to be taking on in this video? Okay, we're taking on Shiki. Let's do it. I'm, ho I'm not even gonna look. I'm not even gonna look. I'm not gonna look. I'm not gonna look. 
And uh, I hope that when I uh, when I uncover my eyes, I'm gonna get some uh, insane pause. But we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I don't even know when I need to uncover. First one is Diamante. Okay, so Diamante is pretty cool. You guys just saw what I pulled. So if I pulled a legend, that is insane. But I have a feeling I didn't. But we'll just see anyways. Diamante is pretty cool. I've actually already got him. So that's a socket and a potential skill up. If I can get a skill up on him, that would be insane. Next unit. Oh my god! Yo! <laughs> Woo! We got Don Flamingo! Oh my god! Woo! Oh my god, no way! <laughs> oh my god! And here we are in game now with Don Quixote Do Flamingo, captain of the Don Quixote Pirates and one of the Royal Seven Warlords of the Sea. His string string fruit powers let him do things like travel through the air and take control of other people. Artwork looks very, very good, by the way. Uh, my Do Flamingo, though, is limit broken. I actually don't have a dupe of him unevolved, so I can't like go ahead and use one that doesn't have a limit break, but it shouldn't be a big problem anyway. But this is what we're going in today. Remember, we're taking on Clash Shiki, which is definitely the most difficult difficult raid I believe that we've taken on thus far in the Legends of OPTC series so I'm actually looking forward to it but I'm also kind of scared at the same time now uh, in this team here you can see we've got a lot of really random units we've got uh, the Clash Anel who is going to be a really useful unit here uh, you guys will see a little bit later on why he's here exactly but we also have Caesar Clown who's going to be our dedicated driven attack booster we also have Rare Recruit Gladius who uh, is another character that gets released he hasn't actually get released during Do Flamingo's batch I believe he actually comes out in the next Don Quixote batch, but I wanted to put him in this team anyway because he just felt like a really good fit. Um, he's a health cutter. He gives himself a matching slot. It's going to be really nice for the final boss stage. And then we've got this Halloween Zora, who's just like a beat stick. He's a quick, he's a driven unit. We've got, we're going up against the strength boss, so we want to be running as many quick units as we can. And we also have the Don Quixote pirate ship, which is available from the Dofi training forest, giving our driven units an attack boost, a health boost, making, making perfects easier to hit, which is very useful as well, because remember, you need to consistently hit your perfects with Doflamingo as your captain and also has a special ability which gives us a 0.2 chain boost for that turn as well. It would be really good if we're able to get that to activate at the end of the quest. So now that we have our team ready to go, let's go ahead and jump into the content. And once again, shout out to my man, the Lord Shiro for providing our Don Quixote Doflamingo. Amazing sockets, by the way, but let's go ahead and run it. Let's run the set. Here we go. So Doflamingo is ready to go. I'm, I'm super pumped to get into this one. Really hope that we get through it. We have to hit our perfects, which is going to be relatively difficult. We have to consistently do it. Let's jump into the content against Raid Shiki. And here we go. As we've already established, this is probably the most difficult raid that we've taken on thus far. And this is not a good start. Having such low cooldowns on those guys. Ah, that sucks. That's a really, really bad start. Um, we definitely want to take out some of these guys. Actually, you know what? It probably would be ideal if we're able to take out all of these guys that have a one-turn cooldown. We don't have that much HP, despite the fact we actually have a ship that boosts our health by 1.35. We just don't have a lot going on here. So we are going to do as, as good as we can to kill these one cooldown enemies and hopefully hit our perfects along the way. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Alright, so we did have to take out an additional enemy that I didn't really want to take out, but I think it should be okay. Um, should I hit with a non-matching slot or a matching slot with a dex unit? Probably attack with this guy. Okay, good. He didn't die. We're going to take a little bit of hits here, which is... That's a lot of damage. You know, 7,000 per hit is, is a bit of a problem. Oh, he got below 50%. What does he do? He just shuffles our slots. Oh, man, that's really bad. He is on a two-turn cooldown again, so I'm just going to do this real quick shouldn't be a problem and remember that because we didn't hit it perfect with our first hit we get no attack boost from doflamingo so it is a really good way to stall if you need to do that um like in this instance here we can consume this recovery slot and then because like on the first attack we still have our three times boost so that will kill but we can still consume the recovery slot moving into the next stage which is really good but uh, it is super ideal to get more matching slots once again really terrible cooldowns this is looking a little scary right now um let's see here this guy is a dex unit we'll hit with that quick slot and then we want to kill that middle guy here this middle guy could be a bit of a problem so we're going to definitely use a matching slot on that guy all right let's see what we can do here let's go Okay. And is that going to kill? Yeah, even though we didn't have the attack boost on that last hit, we still got that KO. 
I know that these guys uh, have the potential to do really, really bad things. We still need to get a little bit of decent stall off. I know that in the next room, I think we actually have the potential to get a little bit of stall off as well. Our matching slots are not looking too good, so I'm a little bit scared about that. I think I will take one hit from these guys, so let's do this. I hope I don't regret this. I really hope I don't regret this. Hopefully he doesn't do any gimmicks. No gimmicks. That's what I like to see. That's really what I like to see. All right, let's actually just skip that next turn there. Um, hopefully we get a matching slot or two would be really, really good. We... Oh, Badly matching slots is not good. So this stage... Okay, I do remember this. Um, this was a really annoying stage. But So that, that, um, that, that squid targets one character on our team. And he like it just gives that character high chance of paralysis. And when we say high chance of paralysis, it's like pretty much almost guaranteed. So at this point here, we want to kill that squid. Because I, I think he does do bad things on the next turn. I think he maybe poisons us. I can't remember exactly what he does. So we want him to go down. And the dinosaurs obviously would be ideal to go down as well. Um, but, you know, having to hit your perfects consistently every turn is a little tricky. Alright, without further ado, let's, let's do it. Okay, that was really bad. Uh, I didn't really want to hit that turtle there, but I was actually really, really scared that we we're going to uh, we we're going to kill it. At least we didn't kill the turtle. That's actually really good. We want to kill these dinosaurs here, though, so let's do this. Let's go. That's perfect, no problems at all. So the turtle's gonna hit us, but this is good, right? Because we have a high chance of paralysis on our character. When we attack, he shouldn't hit the turtle. The turtle actually doesn't have that much HP at all. So this is a, a great way to get just free turns of stall without really doing anything, which is good. So we're gonna take a bit of damage here from the turtles, but that's fine. And our, our cooldowns are looking pretty good too. The ship is almost ready, Seas is almost ready. So I'm actually looking, looking pretty good right now. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay, I didn't realize that, that, uh, that Zora was going to instantly KO that turtle. Dang it, dude. All right, so let's see. Stage four. All right, we've got the seahorse. We have some back mob characters. I know that this guy at the back, the um, the green guy, I think he does bad things. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I just remember all these old mob stages being such a pain with these characters back in the day. But um, we want to kill the seahorse. That's obviously ideal. And then the mob character. Let's do it. Oh, no. Okay, hopefully that, that green guy doesn't do anything. Okay, he didn't. That's perfect. That's really good. Um, we don't really need to stall here. Yeah, I think we can actually just move on. Yeah, we don't need to stall at all. Now, what happens in this next stage is that Shiki is going to shuffle one of our bottom units into the top row. So, we want Caesar to be the captain. If Zora ends up being the captain, we will have to reset the game. So, let's see what happens here. Who's he going to target? Oh, he actually does target Caesar. That's great. We don't have to reset the game. Thank God for that. Now, he does also shuffle our slots, I believe. Oh, my God. Those slots are terrible. Those slots are so bad. Oh, no. Oh, dude. So, remember, remember the thing about Doflamingo is that he doesn't give himself a matching slot. Bro, if we lose due to that, I'm going to be so mad. And I think we actually have level 2 or level 3 orb slots. Let's see. Um, active powers. Yeah, we've, oh, we've almost got level 3. That's crazy, dude. Two badly matching slots on the two hardest hitting units on the team. You love to see it, right? Well, anyways, let's do our burst turn and see what we're able to do here. Unfortunately, Doflamingo having a badly matching slot does get amplified with the fact that we have an orb boost. So that really does... Really, really does suck. Let's first of all use Gladius. So as we said, Gladius is going to go ahead and give himself a matching slot, but it also cuts the enemy's health by 20%. And remember, normal attacks only wasn't really a thing back in the day. So we, we, we can use as many health cutters as we really want. Let's use Caesar Clown for our attack boost. I know some people say use NL because NL gives you a bigger boost, of course, for your quick units, but... We want to save Anel until the next turn, uh, or until the revive, really, because he does revive, and we want to save Anel for that. Now we do want to use a Doflamingo special, which will go ahead and change the adjacent slots into matching and give us a 2x orb boost. I really hope that this guy doesn't do anything too crazy on the next turn. And we'll go ahead and use the Don Quixote Doflamingo ship, which gives us a 0.2 chain boost for this turn. Now, let's see. Caesar is on 100,000, which will go down to 50,000. So, we get to, we got to attack first with the two Doflamingos. We'll hit with the Caesar. Then we'll go Zoro, Gladius, and then NL to finish it off. So, all right. Wish us luck. Let's see how much damage we can do. Let's do it. Oh, my God. We missed. Are you kidding me? 
bro, what is that? No! Bro, how do we miss? We have perfect easy to hit. Oh, what does this guy do? Okay. Nothing too crazy. At least Dofi has a matching slot. That's actually pretty cool. Exchanges our captains again to Gladius. Actually, this is... I think we actually might be okay. Hold on, let's use a Doflamingo special. Remember, adjacent slots matching, two times all boost. We actually have pretty good matching slots right now. Uh, and Gladius will give our, our quick units, I think it's a 2.75? Boost quick characters attack by 2.75. Um, I wonder, can, I wonder, does he actually, I don't think he reacts to like a, a delay or anything. Use Zora to delay him. Okay. Um, let's attack and see what happens. All right, let's do it. Let's go. We actually got it. Yo, he's dead. All right, it's over. It's over. We just win. We win. Let's go, dude. Okay, so the thing about it is, is that Shiki does revive to 30 HP. This is the reason why I wanted to keep Enel, because we can just go ahead and use the NL special to instantly defeat him, right? Right? So here's Enel. Clash Enel, very powerful unit on release as well. Was very good for a very long time. And there it is. We win. We actually beat Shiki with double Doflamingo, despite the fact we kind of screwed up that burst turn. I think we still would have been fine, even if we got him down to like maybe above 20%, I think we still would have been okay, but we actually still got the win! That's absolutely crazy, dude! Shout out to Dofi for the one time, that's crazy, dude. I mean, even though we did screw up, that was still a bunch of fun to actually get through the content with double Dofi, having to consistently hit those perfects. That's crazy, dude. Absolutely crazy. And that being said, that is going to conclude yet another episode of the Legends of OPTC series. Really hope you guys have enjoyed the episode today with Don Quixote do Flamingo. And in next week's video, we are going to go ahead and take on Corazon. Now, Corazon, I still don't know how I'm going to structure that episode considering the style of unit that he is, but I am pretty excited to get into it. Corazon is a very, very interesting unit and still is a unit that sees play today. So I'm very, very much looking forward to that. But I really hope you guys did enjoy at least this episode of the Legends of OPTC series with Don Quixote do Flamingo. If you guys did enjoy the video today, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.